Whenever people talk about virtual reality, you always hear them say the same word, immersive. But what is immersion and why is virtual reality so immersive? Virtual reality has the power to make intelligent, rational people do things like this. What are you going for, the six? <laughs> oh, oh wrong. Jesus f***ing hell. That is Did you try and lean on a table? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. The definition of the word immersion is the fact of becoming completely involved in something. It even gives an example of total immersion in a video game is almost like living another life. When we talk about immersion, it isn't an on off switch. We never feel like we're actually on top of the mountain or driving a real race car around a track. But there are different levels of immersion. Some games and apps are more immersive than others and you can make some games more immersive by using add-on peripherals, which I'll talk about more later. So let's get into all the different factors in more detail. We're going to start with the basics. Virtual reality in its most basic form consists of having a screen or two screens which then display two separate images, one for each eye. Each image has a different perspective, just like in real life. The results are perfect 3D. We're not talking about 3D like at a cinema, where it looks like the image is coming out of the screen a little bit. We're actually talking about, holy shit, it looks like someone stood right in front of me 3D. Add to that the ability to move your head, to look around the world, and this alone makes people feel immersed in the world or environment you're looking at. Some of the cheaper, more basic headsets, like Google Cardboard, Gear VR, or the Oculus Go, all do this, but if you try to lean in, or do anything other than pivot your head, the world will move with you. This not only breaks immersion, but can make you feel sick. These types of headsets are known as 3 degrees of freedom, or 3 doff. The more expensive, and what I consider proper VR headsets, have 6 degrees of freedom, or 6 doff. These include the PlayStation VR, Oculus Quest, Rift S, or the Valve Index. Thanks to sensors tracking the movement of the headset, now you can lean in for a closer look, crouch down, or even walk around your entire room. This adds another layer to the immersion level. These 6 DOF headsets also have tracked controllers. This allows you to move your hands around in a 3D space. My first experience of VR was using a Gear VR. I was personally blown away, but shortly afterwards decided to build a PC and bought an Oculus Rift. Putting on the Rift with the touch controllers for the first time took things to an entire new level. So let's do a quick recap. We've got holy shit, this looks real 3D. The ability to move your head to look around in a natural way. The ability to move your entire body and even walk around your play area. And finally, we have hands which we can move around in the virtual world. But as my girlfriend likes to tell me, it's no good having hands if you don't know what to do with them. Not only can you move them around, but with buttons or sensors, depending on the controllers, you can actually reach out and grab virtual objects. In fact, I guarantee the first thing we all did, or will do, when you first get into VR, is start picking things up and throwing them around. Virtual reality brings out the inner child in us. Having a gun in your virtual hand, physically crouching behind cover, peeking or leaning out to take shots, having to line up the sights of a pistol for a headshot, are all things that feel completely natural because we are acting out the actions as we would in real life. You can put someone who has never played a video game into virtual reality and they will get the hang of it pretty quickly. Try sitting them down with a gamepad or mouse and keyboard and watch them struggle. But not all games or apps are equal and the good developers know that the more that you have to do with your hands, the more immersive it is. Let's look at some examples. I've already done a separate video on Lone Echo, but even now, they still have some of the best hand interaction with the environment and also making full use of your hands for gameplay. To turn on your scanner, you have to tap the top of your wrist. To turn on your headlamp, you tap the side of your head. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is a recent VR game that uses your hands to do most things in the game. You've got a backpack which you pull from your left shoulder. If you want to grab things out of it, you simply reach inside to the desired slot. If you want to check your map or objectives, you grab where a top pocket would be on a shirt 
and then you can navigate the menus by physically tapping on the icons on the pages. If your flashlight starts to run out of charge, you have to give it a shake. It all feels very intuitive, and it doesn't take long for you to start naturally doing this sort of stuff without even having to think about it. The less friction with buttons and menus, and the more natural interaction you have with the world and the game's mechanics, the more you lose yourself in the game. So what else can help a game be more immersive? Having a game with great graphics helps a lot, especially a game with good lighting. The pinnacle of this right now would be Half-Life Alex, which has the best lighting I've seen in any VR game. If you combine that with the most detailed environments and assets, this game made me feel that early sense of presence and had me reacting to enemies and set pieces like it was my first time all over again. We've also seen from the demo of an upcoming VR game called Vertigo 2 that even if the actual environments aren't ultra realistic, some good lighting really tricks the brain. Having a full body with full arms can also help with immersion, but it can also break it when your arms don't line up with your virtual ones. Some people really like seeing their arms, other people don't. One genre that really benefits from VR is horror. If you like watching horror movies or playing non-VR horror games, then virtual reality takes it to the next level. For a long time, I just couldn't handle horror because it really gets your adrenaline going and it puts you in that fight or flight mode. You either end up ripping the headset off or punching your girlfriend in the face by accident. Ah! Ah! Fuck! <sighs> Let's finish off by talking about add-on peripherals. You've got the aim controller on the PSVR. This is like your old school light gun, but now when you look down, instead of a plastic gun, you see your in-game gun which can move around and tracks your movement one to one. On the PC, people buy gun stocks which have slots for your motion controllers to fit into. You can pull your hand out to reload or use a pistol. Holding onto something that you can move around and use like the real life counterpart really adds to the experience and the immersion. Another genre that's really benefited from VR is the racing simulator scene. Sitting in your bucket seat, turning a steering wheel is one of the most immersive things you can do in VR. Playing games like Assetto Corsa or Dirt Rally have been some of the best gaming experiences of my life, with moments when I just completely get lost in the game because of how close it feels to the real life. You've also got flight sims with flight sticks. Some people have haptic vests which send vibrations to your body. There are lots of more details that I could go into about immersion and the way that virtual reality changes the way we play different genres, but I don't want this video to go on to too long. I've already made a separate video about third person VR games, I've made another one about physics and virtual reality, and I'm going to be doing a series of videos going from genre to genre, going into more detail over the coming weeks and months, so if you found this video interesting, make sure to check out the other videos, and you can always subscribe. Or don't, it's entirely up to you.